Hey y'all, this is Ryan Darcy with Masonic Studios and I'm going to go over how to quickly set up uh, a feedback event factory for your game. So hopefully you have downloaded it from the Unreal Engine Marketplace by this point uh, and, and have enabled it. And if you have, and you cr go to create a new blueprint class, you should see feedback event factory. So select that to create a new one, call it new FEF or whatever you want. And I'm gonna go ahead and um, add some stuff to it. So everything you can add to the factory is all under this feedback event factory headline here. Um, note that the auto destroy check frequency is how often it will try to destroy itself um, by checking to see if all the events have played out um, below here. Uh, here's your default attach point, um, which everything will try to attach to unless you override it. And yeah, so let's just quickly add a particle system and make sure we got this working. Uh, I'm going to add an explosion. I'm going to offset it in the Y axis by 400 because why not? Uh, maybe scale it up by three times. And um, yeah, let's, let's quickly check that this is going to work. So how do we trigger it? Well, we've got the new feedback vent factory here and we can just drop it in the game. Uh, and then two ways to trigger it at this point. You can say, hey, play this as soon as begin play triggers in the level, uh, just by clicking that box, or you can unclick it and go to your level blueprint and say, hey, I'm begin play. Let's add a delay of three seconds or something, and then make sure your factory is selected in game or in the editor, create a reference, and then say play events. All right, so all we have right now is an explosion. So three seconds in, we should see an explosion here. Perfect, explosion, a little bit offset to the right, just as I had specified in the feedback event factory. So okay, let's add some more stuff. Uh, I'm gonna remove this translation, and I'm gonna add another particle system to play. Uh, let's maybe have some fire that sticks around. And then I'm gonna add some sound. Uh, this is kind of a weird head loop, but uh, let's have the head be the explosion. And then the loop be fire. Uh, maybe fade out the explosion over 0.25 seconds and fade in the fire over 0.25 seconds. Whatever you wanna do there. Uh, there's a bunch of other settings in here that I'm not going to go over. Um, they should be well documented if you hover over them. You can see kind of what they do. Uh, I'm just going for the basics right now. Let's add some force feedback or some rumble. So uh, first we need to select the attenuation settings. I've got some attenuation settings right here that I already created. I'm going to keep the scale at 1.0 uh, and I'm going to add this force feedback effect that I have already created. It's just one big rumble all the way down over the course of a second. That's force feedback. Then we can add a camera shake. Uh, let's say that the camera shake uses force feedback attenuation. So that means it's going to fade out over the same attenuation settings that the force feedback is going to have. I find that to be pretty useful. Usually I'm tuning these things to be the same. Uh, and then I have a new camera shake that I've already pre-authored for this tutorial that's sitting here. And then I'm gonna spawn some actors. Uh, I already created this class called Scraps. This Scraps class uh, basically has a bunch of cubes and then a radial force emitter at the center. So basically it's just gonna spawn those cubes and apply a force so they kind of explode outward. And I'm not going to do an animation for now, but I will later. Time dilation. Uh, let's slow down time for a second. And I've got this time dilation map, which you can see uh, goes from uh, the normal time setting of uh, 1.0 scale down to uh, 0.1 scale for a bit, and then back up to 1.0 for a nice ease in and out of the time scale. 
And you could choose to make an AI noise with this. Uh, I'm, I'm going to go probably have another tutorial later that gets into the specifics of AI, but uh, for now, I'm going to leave it at that. All right, so now, three seconds in, this feedback event factory should now spawn all of the new things that we added. So we added fire in addition to the explosion, we added sounds form, we added rumble, and we added a camera shake and time dilation. So you should see all that represented now three seconds into the game. And I'll get close so you can see the uh, camera shake fall off over distance. And uh, maybe you'll hear my controller rumble here that's sitting on the desk. All right, all the things we set up and uh, we're looking good. You saw the cubes disappear after three seconds there. Um, I forgot to mention that when you spawn an actor, uh, you can set their lifetime here to say when they disappear. Um, yeah, so that's a, that's a really quick example of how to um, get a feedback event factory spawning in your game. Uh, another use case that I often use is uh, outside of the level impl implementation and more, more for systems. As an example, uh, we currently have this fire animation hooked up to the... Uh, whoop, there was an explosion currently have this fire animation hooked up to the weapon, so um, I'm going to remove that animation from the current setup and trigger that animation through a feedback event factory uh, and also maybe attach an explosion to it. So I'm going to open the first person character blueprint here that's included in the demo. Uh, I just happen to already be in the area where they are triggering the animation, so let's unhook that for now. And now we are going to add a variable for the fire feedback event factory and make sure it is in fact a feedback event factory and we want to make sure that we select a class reference here we're not doing an object reference a class reference and then compile and then you can choose that new feedback event factory that we had created here um, th that's the same one that's out here exploding in the distance we're going to make that trigger on the gun as well so, um, we've set our feedback event factory as such, and let's spawn feedback event factory. There's a few different options here. You can spawn it out in the world, attach it to an actor, or attach it to a specific component. So, we're going to attach it to a specific component here. And we've got the... Uh, so, this is interesting. So, we've got the first person mesh that we want to trigger the animation. Uh, on, but we want to trigger the effect on the weapon. So let's first get the gun mesh and use that as the attached component. And then we there's a, a socket on there called muzzle. And we're not going to change any of these other settings. And we've got our new FEF that we're going to set here. Let's hook that up. And now we shouldn't see an animation because I've unhooked the animation, but we should see that explosion effect uh, come out of the gun. Boom, right up in your face. That's a lot to handle. Uh, and now the fire is going to be stuck to my gun the entire time because it's set to looping. So uh, let's quickly show you how to kill that effect. Um, we could easily do that here by adding a sequence. but I want to do it like this. Uh, okay, so we can add a delay here. And let's say after two seconds, uh, we can kill the factory. Uh, but actually, first, we need to create a variable to hook this up to. So when we create the feedback event factory, um, it's going to return a handle here, which is uh, an object reference to a feedback event factory. So let's go ahead and promote to variable. and call it H fire FEF. I like to preference all my hand handles with H. Uh, and then after a two second delay, we can then grab that handle and say stop events. And when we stop events, it's also going to destroy the factory, which is exactly what we want. Uh, let's give it three seconds to play out a little bit more. OK, so let's make sure that works. Alright, the fire is still hanging around. Oh god. And yeah, okay, then it killed D1 attached to my weapon. One more time. 
three seconds, killed it. Okay, cool. So we've got the weapon uh, firing off that effect. And, but what about the animation that we unhooked here? So let's create a new feedback event factory. Whoops. And let's call this fire animation FEF. And all we're going to put on this one is an animation. Uh, theoretically, we could put more stuff um, that's getting attached, but everything else is, all the other feedback is on the weapon right now, and that's totally fine. So let's just get the animation going. Um, okay. Let's spawn feedback event factory attached to a component. Uh, let me make a little room here. More room. Just throw this underneath. Okay, so this one is going to be attached to the first person mesh because that's where the animation is as opposed to the weapon, which is where the effect is playing right now. And the class, let's just select it right here. Uh, instead of creating a variable, uh, we're going to select the fire animation FEF. We're not going to attach it to anything. Uh, and yeah, we're just going to play that on the mesh. So let's just do this. Spawn this first. And then go ahead and spawn the effect as well. Actually, first, I'm not going to spawn the effect so you can just see the animation because it's going to get a little crazy when the effect's in there. There you go. Uh, it's not spawning the projectile either because I unhooked that part, uh, but it is playing the animation now through the feedback event factory. So if I go ahead and also hook this up, we'll get the effect and we will also um, fire the projectile because that happens down here. Okay, that is a crazy muzzle flash, um, but hopefully you get the idea of how this can be used. Uh, that's it for now. Um, I'll try to get a, a tutorial for AI later. Um, that's a bit more of an advanced use case. But uh, yeah, I hope you find this useful. Definitely hit me up on the support thread uh, if you have any questions or email me directly, and I'll try to get you sorted as quick as possible. Thanks.